Hey there. Welcome to the video on cyclohexane. This is a six-membered ring that has all the hydrogens on it. Right now I have some red and some white, but we'll get into that in just a second. And if we make the flat ring, so it sits on the table like that, flat, we can see that we have six hydrogens coming above the ring and six hydrogens going below the ring. In the flat cyclohexane, what happens is we have all those bond angles of 120. And another thing about the flat cyclohexane is that we have torsional strain, crazy. So every time you look down a carbon-carbon bond, you see that those atoms are eclipsed, and so there's much torsional strain in the flat cyclohexane molecule. Also, I wanted to mention that when I put my hydrogens on, I have red, white, red, white, red, white going around the ring, and then on the opposite side, I have white, red, white, red, white, red. And so every carbon has a red and a white and they are opposite and they go every other, okay? That'll give us some insight into uh, what we'll talk about in the next video. And so what happens is the bond angles inside of this cyclohexane are 120. And of course we know we want tetrahedral carbons to be 109.5, what happens is, is this molecule is going to pucker so that it can achieve better bond angles. So what happens is one of the carbons is going to pucker up and one of the carbons is going to pucker down. And so if we do pucker up, pucker down like that, we end up with the chair conformation. And there's a chair. So supposedly you're gonna be sitting in this chair right here where the four carbons are in the plane. And then this is where your head will go up here where you puckered up. And this is where your feet will go when you pucker down. And so that's called the chair conformation of cyclohexane. And it is actually the most stable version. And so from the chair, you can see we have those six red hydrogens that are going up and down, and those are called the axial hydrogens. And if we rotate the molecule, we can see that then the white hydrogens are going away outside of the ring, and those are called the equatorial hydrogens. So we have axial in red and equatorial in white. And so one goes up and down, and the other goes around the equator or equatorial. And so if we have this chair conformation, we have achieved perfection in terms of cyclohexane because all of the bond angles now are 109.5. And if you look down any of the carbon-carbon bonds, you see that everything is completely staggered. So no matter where you go in the molecule, we have everything is completely staggered. Any bond that you look down, the atoms are completely staggered. And so we have achieved zero torsional strain as well as zero angle strain. So cyclohexane in the chair conformation is close to perfection. This is great. The next thing I want to talk about is the ring flip. So what happens with the ring flip is that you actually move the one that puckered up into the puckered down position and the one that puckered down into the pucker up position. And so we'll do that right now. Please pay close attention to the color of the hydrogens. Pucker down, pucker up. Here's our new chair after the ring flip. And what has happened is our white hydrogens are now in the axial position and our red hydrogens are in the equatorial position. And so a ring flip allows the hydrogens to switch. And so if we talk about drawing that three-dimensional chair conformation of cyclohexane in a two-dimensional space, we're going to do it using these instructions. We're going to start with a shallow V, and then we're going to draw a third line that goes here. And then we're going to draw a line that's parallel to that original line. It's going to be about the same length, but it's going to be lower. And then we're going to draw a parallel line to this line right here. And then finally, we'll draw a parallel line to this line right here. And so that is the basis of a chair conformation. If we then start thinking about adding axial hydrogens, we're going to go up and down alternately. 
and we're going to start going up with the pucker up. So this carbon right here is our pucker up, and we're going to go axial hydrogen goes straight up, axial hydrogen the next one goes straight down, axial hydrogen here goes straight up, axial hydrogen here goes straight down, this one goes straight up, and this one goes straight down. So there are the six orange axial hydrogens. Remember we had three at the bottom, there's three there, and three at the top, there's three there. And so that is how we represent axial hydrogens. The equatorials are a little bit different. And so let's work through the equatorials because we have to put them off at the right angle. The bottom line is if we're drawing the axial hydrogen from this carbon right here that I've indicated in blue, it's going to come off the ring parallel to the sides that do not touch it. So if this is the hydrogen, we're going to be doing parallel to this and this. And so it's going to go this way. And then alternately, this one over here goes that way. So we see this parallel approach throughout the entire process. And so now if we talk about the equatorial hydrogens coming off of this carbon right here, this, the bond that does not touch it is this bond and this bond. And so our hydrogen is going to come off at this angle as well as on this carbon right here, it'll come off at that angle. Now, if we do the last equatorial hydrogens, we have these two green sides left. And so we're going to want to do parallel. So it's going to go parallel this way and parallel this way. And so right now in orange, you see all of the axial hydrogens. And then in green, blue, and red, you see all of the equatorial hydrogens. So this, my friends, is how we draw cyclohexane in a two-dimensional space. There are instructions on the PowerPoint slides doing it exactly the way that I just did it. And so our axials go straight up and our equatorials go out to the side. So the axials are easy. They go up and down and the equatorials go out. And here is a drawing with them independently and then all together. Okay, good luck. You want to try to get some practice on this because this is definitely showing up on the next test.